you, my Lord. Yes, you are, Sellers. I'm sorry, my Lord. Now you've made me forget what 143 half crowns are. Eight into 143. I think it's 17 pounds. 17 and 6. I wonder if I might have a word. So do I. So we're probably right. Not bad, not bad at all, considering last Saturday wasn't a very nice day. Funny, but the Saturday people don't buy a booklet. Only 14 copies. Disappointing. <laughs> They're very good on tea, you know. Yes, and more profit on tea than the booklet. So we mustn't grumble. I always feel a little hurt when they don't buy the booklet. I thought you and I wrote it rather well. Of course, what we really want is a license. A wine spirit license, my lord? Mmm, and beer, of course. Wouldn't that attract the wrong sort of people? It's the riffraff who parade through my house and garden, leaving nutshells and apple cores all over the place of the right kind. I'd just as soon have my privacy invaded by the other sort. The possible eventualities that I incur through allowing the public into my house make me very jealous. In what way? Supposing someone slid down the banisters and broke a hip, anything could happen. Really? I should have thought a license would encourage that sort of thing. Yes, I dare say. It was only a thought, an attempt to be enterprising. I got the idea the other day when I passed a pub called the Duke of Bedford. <laughs> How much is 14, 1 in 60? I give you, my lord. Now, John, now I can't do my account with you pacing there. What do you want? I beg your pardon, my lord. I came to ask if you had finished with the time. Yes, I think so. Why? Then would you mind if I took it down, my lord? What do you want the times for? To light a fire? What do you want to light a fire for? Much too warm for a fire. I want to read it. <laughs> oh, yes, of course, by all means. It's about somewhere. Doesn't it strike you a little odd that your butler should want to borrow the times in the middle of Friday afternoon when his day off is on Thursday, I mean? I hadn't really thought about it. Yes, I suppose it does. What's the matter? You bored? To death, my lord. Why aren't you working? I haven't any work to do. How's that? I've done the silver, and I have nothing to do until I serve you tea at uh, 4 30. No, no, no. I don't mean that sort of work. I meant your novel. Why aren't you working on that? I'm stuck badly. I nearly tore the whole thing up last night. Now, you mustn't do that. What's the trouble? Almost certain that the basic trouble is myself. I'm fundamentally happy and content. That's bad enough, of course. But on top of that, I'm normal. And that's fatal. Do you mean you prefer to be unhappy and abnormal? But of course, I want to be a success. And to be a success, one must at least start off being contemporary, which unfortunately I'm not. It means I must have no feeling of insecurity or frustration, no despair. And that's essential. The first essential. And I feel perfectly contented. <coughs> really rather blameless. And hardly resent anything at all. <laughs> oh Lord, but you must have known all this when you chucked teaching to become a writer. No, I don't think I chucked it to become a writer. Oh, don't misunderstand me. I want to write. But that wasn't the real reason I gave up teaching. Then you're here under false pretenses. You answered my advertisement, and when I asked you what your real qualifications were, you said you held a degree in science. Despite such a ludicrous recommendation, I engaged you as my butler, partly because you said you wanted to write a novel, and you couldn't write after teaching all day, and partly because I remember your father when he was butler, and a very good one too, I always understood. Luckily, it's turned out very well. I'd like to know what your reason was if it wasn't to write. Were you sick of teaching? No. I began to disapprove of what I taught. I began to disapprove of science. I beg your pardon. I maintain that the scientific progress has gone too far and quickly, 
as Bert Van Russell said, science has outstripped wisdom. I felt, I felt, well simply I felt I could go on teaching it anymore. Perhaps discipline is the wrong word. Is distrust the right one? Maybe it is. Yes, I see. But you're quite right, my lord. I'm here under false pretenses, and it worries me a great deal. How do you mean? Well, my lord, the point is, I feel such a waste of money. I don't really think you should have a button at all. No, oh, really? I don't mean to be impertinent, but... Uh, Go on, in for a penny, in for a pound. You see, my lord, you're not contemporary. You mean I'm an antique? <laughs> no, my lord. You're traditional. Well, go on. Ever since your family first lived in this house, they've always had butlers. In earlier times, I suppose they called them stewards. From your point of view, that's sufficient reason to have one now. But don't you see, my lord? Nowadays, you don't need one. Really, you don't. There's no work for me. Years ago, when there were big factories, and entertaining was part of the life of a great house, and the whole place was occupied, and it was open house to your friends, and not just the public, then my job must have been fun, and very hard work. But today, today, I'm really nothing to do. And I, I... What, Zellers? I would feel much happier if you would either stack me or reduce my wages by three pounds a week. That's what I came in here to say, Lord. Not all the time. Yes, I see. What you're saying, in effect, is that I'm out of date, old-fashioned, and clinging to a way of life that's had dry rot in it, since 1938. <laughs> well, you're wrong. You've never been so wrong in all your born days. And I'll tell you why you're wrong. This house and these lands may be mine and title, but I regard them as a small part of England that I hold in trust. In trust for the future, not for my son. I find that fascinating and stimulating. There are treasures and beauty and history in this house, and I'm preserving them in the most modern, Streamlined, commercial way that it's possible to do. The farm pays, the market garden pays, the hens pay, and her ladyship's mushrooms pay. Yes, I see all that. And the reason I implore you is because I know jolly well that the two and six penny public are far more thrilled to catch a glimpse of a real live butler than they are by the Velasquez at the top of the staircase. In spite of what you may think to the contrary, I am in fact extremely contemporary, highly efficient, and very businesslike. And to prove it to you, I'll accept your offer and reduce your wages by three pounds a week as for next Monday. And now I suggest you go to teach your grandmother to suck eggs. <laughs> oh, King Tom, I need Sarah to do something for me first. Fellas, would you do the mushroom run for me? They're all packed, as long as you have a stick by 6.30. Certainly, my lady. Oh, and the van is petrol, so watch out. If my gallons of pickers on my account, remember, it's getting near the end of the month, and I want to hop to death a bit. Very good, my lady. Sellers, how many half crowns and three pounds? About a busload, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I like him more and more. He's that rare beast, a man who will face the dictates of his conscience.